Trollop's expecting it though. Blair's gonna come out. It doesn't quite catch anybody, but the boom bot chases oh. through. He's able to get a frag, and it was a really timed dismiss as he's able to get a few more. How fortunate was it that Shot Up got the kill when he did? It gives him the dismiss. Now he's got the overhill. Him and JMO will just lock things down coming out of Hookah. But if Shot Up doesn't convert that first kill that anyway. Same rollout for Spot Up. It's the boom bot to come through. This time, there's a paranoia to try to assist. JMO with an operator has to be careful, but it's Shot Up who does this a little bit better. He finds three. JMO the fourth. And Spot Up are really going to have to reconsider what they're going to do with this hookah hit because so far they have come away with absolutely nothing against this double duel is set up. It's just Rustin. Last one alive actually does win the first kill. The second one has to come through quickly as he's off the reload, and JMO with the frenzy will find the kill. Brought out the Blade Storm. Is it going to find much? This was one of the question marks I had. I really didn't want to see that showstopper come out personally because that's a great opening for a full by round. But it's still able to get much further onto the side. Bunny's good for one, but JMO is watching the angle just as he was trying to punish that okay. Hunter Spear coming out. It's scrappy. It's a one versus two. Vigman's brought out the classic because he's pretty much out of ammo on the Stinger. So the expectations would dwindle him by the... Danny is immortal. Split their defense up two for two. Dark cover comes out. JC Stanny going to be the first one up. Comes out of the timing of this peak. He'll be in the second dark cover. Here's shots coming through. Good patience coming out. And JC Stanny and Neptune will combine for one each. JC Stanny will find four as he just walks out of the dark cover. Obviously for spot up, but even versus your top tier teams that are out here, your Envies, your 100 Thieves, your TSMs, your Cloud Nines, if Immortals could continue to do stuff like this with their double duelist, they're going to be hard pressed to lose to anybody, I feel like. And as Kenpeki will unfortunately find himself lingering on the backside of what should have been at least one free kill. It's just going to be down to Rustin for a 1v4. No chance there. And 10-0 up. Immortals looking, again, absolutely insane. Hands of Kampeki. But really, Immortals are just not letting him play around. That JMO again could punish Tucker there as he's trying to break through and he gets a second chance. And if any time he gets a second chance, he'll usually find value. Goes to the plane sort of immediately, but I think Buddy oh, gets him just a touch off guard as he was able to teleport over to Lance. You've got Neptune for one, and actually a Hunter's Fury will connect from across the map. So it's going to be a 3v2 for Spot Up. The lockdown will come through. And as Shot Up used the Empress a couple of rounds ago, he won't have that to play with. But he does want to get aggressive. Ken Pecky will punish. And now just down to Gangsta, who will have to wait for the lockdown to expire before he can make a go. And he's going to give this a go because, let's be honest, Immortals has plenty of cash to still spend. They're going to be good for the last two rounds of this half. So it's really a case of why not at this point. He's clearing most of the angles, but the Nana Swarm is going to make sure that he can't get too much done. The majority of this post plant is down in uh, A long. And Kampeki can at least hold on to the operator, which is incredibly key going into the last round. of The timing here, I think they actually know he's here, but still finds two kills? That just can't happen. Both players in Hookah were looking at him. You also have two players that are coming away from B long to pinch, and JC Stanny still walks away with two kills off screen. That just can't happen. Question that Matt now for spot up is what did they decide to do now? They've still got a lot of pressure towards Hookah, but it is being watched by Gangster's operator. Could rotate over to A, but it's a case of maybe just waiting out, seeing if somebody peeks for information and have a Kampeki punish them from this spot. And he's gonna check this corner. At least he can get Neptune, but traded out almost immediately by shot up. It's a one versus two left. now. Gangster Gets the pulse on and the wallbang isn't good enough, but if Figman can get a frag they can't. Yet the Hunter's Fury could have maybe made a creative play out of it. And again, these are rounds that we saw from that pistol. You just gotta win more convincingly than that. As this time a paranoia will be sent over to Lamps. That'll lead an opportunity for numbers. Kepeki has to respond to two. Shoulder peaks that are coming out. Neptune, meanwhile, has found another elimination, but Kepeki and Bunny are good for the response. Last player left will be JC Stanny. He's made his way around in the lamps, and with that, he will find a kill plus a Spectre. And beyond that, I think he actually reads the information that, hey, Spot Up are pretty stacked up defensively towards A. So you'll take the teleporter through Hookah, but it's going to be Figment who's watching this. He's able to find a significant amount of damage, but can't confirm the kill. But the recon bolt comes out, and there's really no chance. Things will start off with an opening Hunter's Fury. And Figment's actually able to take down Shot Up and confirm a significant amount of damage. That's over through A mid. 
So a lot of tagged up members for Immortals. They're still trying to commit forward. Rustin holds on to his angle and showers as he takes down Neptune. And the Nano Storm will actually also provide a little bit of extra damage. Immortals, they have not done very well here as far as trying to force their way on. But you have to give a lot of credit over to the Hunter's Fury that found a significant amount of damage. Now it's just about cleaning things up. Gangsta has no chance. It's spot up. They'll actually get themselves a... And with this, there is some significant pressure for them over in the hookah. Now out they go. Bunny's able to find one. Shot's a little shaky, but he still secures the second. Looking for number three, he'll grab that over to the classic and then deciding I can't be stuck here. He uses the shredded stuff to teleport away. Gonna have a little bit of help. Nice paranoia as he finds number four. Give him the ace, and yes, he will. Bunny for all five, getting the last two with the classic. Got two defenders holding there. Wait for now, and that's exactly what he's gonna do. And the Blitzer is also spent as you're going to get JMO going aggressively through. That's going to be the elbow cleared off. So JMO will get on the site with his teammates. Spike, Spike will be planted. Neptune is able to find first one. It's actually over to the backside of the long by the well. And now the Neural Depth comes out. A lot of information as far as where Spotup is currently positioned. The Empress will come through. This is Immortals trying to put this one home here at a 13-5 scoreline. And they're killing off a lot of time. Tucker's got to make a play. He's got to go. All he's got, though, is just one blast pack. Ken Becky's going to be the first one in. It will take down j -Mo and get a second, but Gangsta there for the immediate trade. He'll find one more. Neptune will clean things up. Ascent is going to flick around as the smoke start to come in. He's made his way onto site. A lot of the kills by utility is going to come out and be impactful, but Rustin still can't confirm a kill, and Neptune knows roughly where they're going to be landing. Everybody on spot up is still alive up until now as Neptune gets one, and it's suddenly got very dicey, very crazy on this site is Rustin's still alive the last alive very little from spot up to try and protect it other than that alarm bomb double nano storms will come through early not going to find anything whatsoever shot up up top able to take down ken becky left. goes to dismiss just down to 53 hp but we'll get the spike planted and of course the help spike is planted. here for immortals but Rustin, okay he's done well this time around he's found himself a double shot up will eventually deal with him but spot up are at least in a position to where they can contest watch the long flank trying to come through as jmo is still not here this is a now a 2v1 situation but bunny is going to have absolutely no idea that jmo is playing deep a couple of shots will tag trade is going to be there as figment finds the response 1v1 he knows exactly where jmo is at but jmo doesn't have a reason to check this until at least the spike is toggled there will be the peak shoulder comes through jmo just playing his life and now he'll back a little bit further away, halfway defused. One more shoulder will do. And can Figment get this in time? He absolutely should. And a beautiful response there. Figment was able to get the JMO down to half HP off his initial peak. Defense, but doesn't really get all that much of it that there's people there. But they're going to be hitting harder. We saw a lot of false buys do really well yesterday. It's a hero vandal for shot up. He has the Empress to play with. This is looking like if they find the kills, they're going to try to make that play. But he gets tagged up heavily on the way in and then taken down by Bunny on the way through. So Neptune will come out. He will find one pick, pick himself up a Phantom. And it just comes down to can Immortals actually find this Vandal? They have good isolation onto where JC Stanny is, or do they? He still walks away with two kills. Unbelievable. And behind this, the spike gets planted. So now Buddy down to 8 HP. Oh, any tag from anything will deal with him. And unfortunately, the timing of this rolling thunder just wasn't quite there. As Ken Pecky wow. falls, Gangsta just tapping away. We'll find the kill and somehow- A lot of people. Hunter's Fury out early will find not only damage, but also a kill, Ooh. and that's going to find a second. Ken Pecky's going to peek afterwards and find the third kill. Great utility so far from Figment. That cannot be understated. He was great on bind. He has showcased he could continue to be great here on Ascent, and that's great news for Spot Up. You need to get good participation from your Sova if you want to be able to read this Immortals hit, especially considering that a lot of it is done off the backhand of double duelists in this round. Energy. It's great for them as they've got a flawless run ahead of them. They can just find the last player of Gangsta who's all the way back in his spot. Can pick his position, not given up by the recon ball. Smart movement to know that there was a little cubby that you could hide in. The Gangsta having Hunter's Fury is not looking to use it or give away his position at this point. Save might come in handy, but he walks right just looking to punish spot as much as possible. I'm not going to punish there. Gangsta was trying for a martial play. Cyber Cage will essentially allow Neptune to pick up the weapon if he so chooses to use it. A Bladestorm will also be popped here. That looks to be also from Immortals. Onto the site they go. Martial Shot does connect. A second one as well. Neptune able to find a kill. And now Jamo's in a position where if he can find this kill up top, it'd be great. But Rustin, he's really woken up. He finds himself a second kill. Bunny helping him with what would have been the third. 
and that was just down to shot up in a 1v3 situation playing from the outside area of A Arches. He does have the spike, and he is looking to try to come into the site with it for maybe a plant to help the Rico up just a little bit. But spot up, they do not want to allow him a chance. Unfortunately, they can't find the kill before the spike goes down. And with that, a defuse will be required. But regardless, spot up have been great here in the last couple of defensive rounds. And they'll tie up this ascent early, 4-4. Yeah, not another flawless at least, but three rounds in a row. We can't pick at the operator, and a lot of it has been completely unmatched. Jabo, outside of the first couple of rounds that we saw, That's he hasn't been able one. to match up against this, and another aggressive beat for Ken Peck. He pays off as he takes down Neptune for first blood. That's five first bloods now. He's just always getting the first say in on these rounds, and Immortals have constantly been playing slowly. At least Shallop can get one. He is pretty much same when it comes to frags as Ken Pecky. But it feels a lot quieter. Bunny is preparing her with a rolling thunder. There isn't too much that's going to sort of follow in on that. But he doesn't need it anyway. He's able to get them all. He wow. just misses one though. Jamo is still lurking in mid. And Tucker trying to lurk in that position. Gets caught out by Stani. And Bunny's the last really on this side. But Kambek is going to help. We're just going to try to gut check. Dive on into the B site. Lear will provide some sort of a line of sight break. But Kambek again finds another kill. Bunny this time though will fall. And with that, spot exactly. up will have to consider how they want to do a retake as you're going to get gangsta planting the spike without any contest. Spike planted. From the shadows could potentially be used. Go into boathouse, get a bit of information. But other than that, it just has to be brute force. Bunny dying is a big loss. Having that breach utility would be a great way to break onto this site. But it's whether they really catch Stanny that's lurking in B main. He's just going to be sat there politely. And for the first time in a few rounds, Spotup has slowed down this sense of play, and Kampiki can't get it all done. He has to aggressively uh. push with this operator, and Stanley's in a really nice position. It's going to be a real tricky one to break apart. Yeah, this is a little disjointed, and you could definitely tell the struggles. You, you talked about another missed opportunity on the rounds. There was one early in the first for Spotup. That one might be another, but as they go into a force here... They will find good use out of this, the Spectre finding value. Bunny able to get onto the kill feed as well. Down to 16 HP, but he's okay to continue to contest. Shoot. Maybe not. Spot up able to find one, and actually good help oh, from Neptune. Neptune. His shot up was low. He's actually still able to grab an orb, so he will overheal back to full. 3v3 we go. Neptune can't work his way on, but shot up is there for the trade. So now 2v2. And the utility of the game is really what I'm curious about here for spot up because you've got two players that are still alive, both with great utility. Figment finds the first kill. JMO by himself with the hero Phantom. He will find the first. Knows that the second is playing long towards A Arches. Nano Storm will force him up, not even peeking. Good awareness here for Rustin as he knows that he can't stick. So JMO going to go for the challenge and Rustin able to spam him down. Not just an aftershock, but also the sentry turret. But how about this aggressive play for spot up and Ken Pecky with the blade storm will find first blood. Gangs the response finds a lot of damage behind this as well but is still on the outside looking in and as the door tries to come down there might be an opportunity here for spot up to take some very key positions around the spike site and actually get the spike down as well fault line will actually deter any players defensively up towards heaven and gangsta still with the door shut in his face we'll have to wait for help before they can try to retake Take flight. The Eldron is going to be used to see what they can find, but nice positioning from spot up means that nobody's really going to have their position given away other than the Sova. Hunter's Fury is available on the attack if they want to use it, but shot up finds that immediate impact. He's 25 HP, dismissed instead of devoured, so he's not going to get that health. He's still alive though. It's a three versus two, and these two attackers right, are playing off the side. On. The defuse has been dedicated, but the Hunter's Fury is going to be used to stop it. He does get taken out. Gangster is down. Oh, boy. They know exactly where Figment is, but he gets two as shot ups there to try and meet him. What play from Figment? Immortals should have had that on lock. He knows that a tripwire was just placed. You should he can run. obviously see the cyber cage on the ground. The Killjoy ultimate is going to be used, and there's no Hunter's Fury to counter it on the defense. From the Shadows does get used, and actually it was dedicated to. Duck has gone in behind. And but behind it's not that, really it's, good enough to yeah, JC Staney is trying to play for a pinch here to maybe try to get around to get this lockdown. He's not going to grab it, and this will actually be one kill before the sentry turret can find anything. So we've got a 3v4, and with no exit available here for Spot Up, it just comes down to can Immortals read the positions that Spot Up are using for their post plan. The one that's really going to be a major contestant is Rustin. Nobody checks. He at least is able to find one kill before the trade comes through. So now a 2v3. Make it one and a third, though, as Ganks is down to a single bullet. Jamo wants to go for this, though. Drops the operator in favor of the Phantom. 
much better tool when it comes in. Timing here is going to be everything, and as Dance the spams, he doesn't find the kill, and now JMO, away from his operator, will be forced just to either save the Phantom or play for exits. He actually was able to collect Ken Peckies, I believe, from before. And so there is still operator for operator trades, but no exits will come his way, and Spot Up will be on map point, looking to send this to map number three. These men across the map as much as possible. Gangster's position not specifically given up, but some nice utility is gonna scare him off oh. that angle. Kampeki gets a second. You would assume this is it for Immortals on this map. Sure feels that way. Fault line's gonna come through. Shot up is able to find at least one kill, but the spike is planted. Rusted nearly gets converted on as you saw a peek from Shot Up, and what a beamer that is as Kempeki falls. Neptune for another! Kanks is able to find a kill, it's just down to Rustin. He finds himself a second. here, But when you've got the participation that Figment has had so far, you absolutely need to keep him on board. Ken Pecky playing aggressive through A short. We'll find a kill to respond to the first blood. Big man, he's able to find one in a second. He actually gets the headshot, I believe, through spot up shoulder. And then you can convert for the second kill. So a numbers advantage here. Ken Pecky, nice flash to help him out as he gets a first foot from models. But there's a lot of garage control. All four of these defenders pretty much stacking in the same position. But it's going to be difficult because the models are prepared for them. And both Leers were spent just to take over C Garage. So you're not going to have any flashes to get onto C here. The only thing you might have is a Recon Bolt. That's really about it. And it looks like with Bunny trying to play through the middle of the map with Rustin, they might just be forfeiting this round and playing for exits. There's not going to be enough time for them to get here. Ken Peck is able to salvage a Spectre. And yeah, this looks to be the play. Just play for exits. See if you can get a couple of weapon upgrades behind this. And as JMO is able to respond to one in front, Neptune will find the other, but the exit will be coming straight down C long. Bunny's going to be here with Rustin. All five players will stay alive on the outside edges through C long, and well, Rustin can only walk away with one, so D garage. So for a spot up, your retake is going to have to be co-eccentric from either side alley. Bunny looking to maybe be the first one, and no more leers to play with. Dark cover will stall him. You also have a blade storm that's out. There's the recon bolt to come through. It's really not going to find any information though. And as Bunny can't confirm the first kill on the JC Stanny, at least Rustin can find some work over towards the outside. Quick scope for Kenpeki, not going to connect. JC Stanny for a second, looking for a third. Tucker's going to be able to find the kill before that can occur. But Immortals, they're still falling low, and the classic swap to Tucker is going to be good. Last one left alive. It's going to be Gangsta. He's in a position to where he can line it up. The ping was there, and the three kills for Gangsta will clutch up for Immortals to tie things 2-2. Very messy. Spot up. Tried to control areas of the map. Immortals getting a plant in. And it came a bit of a, a clown fiesta around the smoke here at this point. But Gangster with some nice play to hold off. You could just see how Spot Up also almost line up probably across side. But Tucker actually using it from the shadows to get out of there just in the nick of time. Teleports in behind him, is back in that position. Doesn't want to give up the fact that he teleported because it doesn't make a noise. He's able to get some damage done. Yeah, that was all just for intel gathering. He just wanted to see if the hit was going to come. And it was Ken Pecky able to get the operator onto Gangster just down to one. It's JMO. Ten seconds left. Spike will be planted. planted. Blavestrom will be called out. Cloudburst also down as JMO is trying to work this, but the double peak coming from behind. Can Pecky able to find the kill? And it's a risky call, I think. Going back to Tucker's player with the from the shadows. He reads how many player information, but Cloudbursts will deny. And Pecky gonna join him up on the tie ground. Immortals with the spike planted. And this is going to be a retake for a spot up that all comes from the front. No consideration whatsoever for the flank. So Immortals post plant setup over towards A long should be pretty safe. And as they take care of Ken Pecky, that will lead to a 4v4. Buddy trying to get on the site. JC standing for another. Rustin looking for the trade. Not going to grab it. And only Figment can find the kill as Immortals will hold. But they have guns and they have map presence. Ken Pecky again. Aggressive angle. Finds one. Grabs the second. Beautiful second shot for Ken Pecky. And again, JMO falls early, finding no value whatsoever shot, against shot. his counterpart. And with that, Spot Up are going to be very comfortable shot. trying to finish this round, unless Shot Up can open up space by himself. He'll find one kill. From the shadows will be placed to go up top to heaven for the side of Immortals. That's going to be JC Stanny who's there. Spike making its way on, and if JC Stanny can lock this position up, this is actually very doable for what was a 3v5 situation. First point of contact is about to come through, and there is a kill. Now all of a sudden, Spot Up have to recognize that 
we have to clear heaven. We cannot allow them to stay here. And JC Stinney has already shrouded step back onto the horn itself. Gonna keep pushing aggressively though. He has the jet right on his right hand side and misses because of the updraft, but they don't catch each other. It's a blind spot that JC Stanley's able to punish. She gets. Recognize that it's pretty free. Paranoia is really not going to do much at all. J Mo going to get information. Misses the he shot at Tucker. He One finds the kill and stays alive. J Mo, what has gone wrong here? 1v3 situation for him. The spike not in a great spot. And as the dark cover comes through, there's also going to be a trap wire right in front of him. The spike will be held and Figment spamming through will find the kills in Immortals giveaway of 5v3. The smoke that is going to keep spot up towards Garage thinking it's going to be a B hit. Rustin is still there though. The kill trip is good for him to get a frag onto Neptune and the Neural Theft as well. It's going to give him a lot of information that he's trying to get a frag off. He can get a spike. second and that's the spike down for Stanny. Game was going to try and come to the rescue and Gangster can help out too but Bunny's now here. It's a two versus one. And this defender is well off the site. Figment needs to get a move on. Bladestorm nets out. Figment does have a considerable amount of utility to left. play with. Five Two shock darts and a recon bolt. Empress is going to be popped immediately. Making life extra difficult for Figment. He's not going to give away his position by sending any darts out. He just wants to walk on in and he might catch timing here. But there are still so many angles that he has to check. Both players are immortals playing down low in hell. Here comes the peak. Not going to find the timing as both JMO and... For a moment. And with that, they'll send shot up over here to help. Here comes the hit though for spot up. Lear is coming through. Tailwind as well. Onto the site already. In close quarters. It's going to be Kanpeki. Another Lear comes through. JC Sandy can't do much besides sit here and soak up some shock cards. But at least kept him from the side for three. Good help from behind. And credit Neptune for keeping this very pivotal 19th round for spot up. Here's the execute. Neptune is going to find a little bit of value. Cyber Cage in front of him with the trap wire. He finds one. Shot up another. The de defense for Immortals on the site has been good so far. But needs to still stand strong. Shock start with Rustin in the mix will also combine. They will will take the win on the site and JC State is going to immediately go from the shadows. He's going to try to go down to C long, but that will be denied and the spike behind this will be planted. Spike planted. There's a pretty good guess to know that the silver would be heading in that direction. They have the Hunter's Fury on the post plant, but the silver is just going to be staying on the site, protecting it, almost giving up his life and it's going to try and face as much as possible. Just JMO in the one versus two. He's picked up a phantom away from the operator. And spot up quite wisely are giving this a lot of space, a lot of respect. They have the ultimates. It's whether a case of the used on this viewer at this point, whether they need to, they don't. They have ultimates. Realistically, do you use them here? Probably not. But you're saving. You might as well try and get some damage done. Keep spot up in check. Yeah. Where the flawless round would be incredible for spot up. Not going to happen here, but shot up gets caught. Going for the overheal. Nice shot from Gangsta. This is still doable, especially if you can find this skill in the corner. He thought he had it, but whips it and tries to patiently line up the shot. It's really spot ups lurking hasn't been seen much at all. It's not that it's not been impactful. It's just not happened much. Yeah. Tripwire is going to be given up, but there's not going to be any facing. Just the Hunter's Fury and Stanny could at least get the lurk from Rustin into mid. A great opening for Immortals to sort of take this fight on as the spike is being planted and Neptune's going in. Left. Neptune's already on site through his cyber cage. Lot of information off the recon bolt and Neptune is able to find two. Knows the third one's nearby. He's going to be able to confirm it with the classic and that... Immortals have really struggled dealing with spot up here and that's the plan from the looks of it from them. Well, look what's different. JC Stanny is on the B site playing through Gong. He could contest this early with just a well placed paranoia. Doesn't even need it for the first kill. Does get taken down. JMO in the Bladestorm is close by to contest. And if Tucker was considering planting, he's going to be denied it. Shot up able to find one more kill. 3v3 we go. But now it's on the Tigger and, uh, pardon me, Tucker and Figment to find a couple. It's just not enough to win the trade. So the spike is left on the B site. Rustin is in a 1v2. He's got Neptune close by low. Gangsta playing a little bit wider. He'll be denied by the cyber cage. cage trigger. It just comes down to does Rustin check this? He hears the cyber cage pop, checks the right, finds the first step, nearly gets the 